when I looked at the Bitcoin number of active addresses using Glassnode, note here that the number of active addresses is actually going up with Bitcoin. So what you're seeing here <clears throat> is the Bitcoin price in gray and the gold orange is the number of unique addresses that are active in the network, either as a sender or receiver, only addresses that were active in successful transactions are counted. So this is a true snapshot of the activity that's going on within the network. Here's the price up here, here's the activity. And you note here that we're not too far off. We're within range of moving into that all-time high back in May of 2021. So the Bitcoin address, unique address activity is, is upward. It's bullish. When we look at the Bitcoin reserve risk on Glassnode, uh, which is an indicator derived by dividing Bitcoin's price by the so-called HODL bank, the HODL bank, a measure of the opportunity cost of holding Bitcoin rather than selling Bitcoin over the lifetime of the Bitcoin network. The lifetime of the Bitcoin network is 11.26 years at present. And according to the indicator, Bitcoin's reserve risk now is significantly below the level from the last all-time high in December 2017, which is here. So what we're looking at here is a indicator that tracks the risk-reward balance relative to the confidence and conviction of long-term Bitcoin holders. And it provides a long-term cyclical oscillator that models the ratio between the current price, the incentive to sell, and the conviction of long-term investors, the opportunity cost of not selling. So when you see the uh, reserve risk is low, when it's low, when it's in the green, it indicates that the hodler, Bitcoin hodler, conviction is high. So that means that opportunity, the unspent opportunity cost is increasing and the price is low. And thus, there's an attractive risk reward to continue to invest and hold on to Bitcoin. It's only when we get into the pink area where the reserve risk is high, when it gets into this area, it indicates that the holder conviction, people hodling Bitcoin is low. And people will want to, they're more likely to, um, to take gains on that Bitcoin so that they're very likely to say, okay, I'm getting out while I can. This market's getting too hot for me. So it's the unspent opportunity cost is decreasing as the Bitcoin risk reserve graph goes higher and higher, especially when, in, when it enters into this pinkish red area. So Basically, the signals are showing that there's a long way for us to go. There's a long way for us to go. We're nowhere near close to where we were back in 2017, back in 2013. All right. We had two, uh, we had two major sell-offs in 2013. One big one, as we all know, in 2017. We're nowhere near close. So we're at, let's say, 50, let's say we're ranging between 56, 60,000 here. You could speculate what the price of Bitcoin will be once we hit the threshold of this reddish pink area that indicates relative overvaluation. The next one I look at is the Bitcoin MVRVZ score. So this score is used to assess when an asset is overvalued or undervalued relative to its fair market value. And essentially, that is when the market valuation is significantly higher than the realized value. So, so when, the, when the market valuation is significantly higher than the realized value, it has historically indicated a market top, a red zone, while the opposite has indicated a market bottom. So we're not quite near the market bottom. So someone's going to ask me, what is realized value? I understand market capitalization. Market capitalization, for those of you who don't know, is if you added all of the value of all the Bitcoin in the world that is in circulation or being held, and you added that up, that would be the total market capitalization. 
the realized market capitalization is a variation of the market capitalization that values each coin based on the price of when it was last moved from one wallet to another wallet on the network multiply by the number of tokens in circulation. This is really important because when we take that value, we take that current value, it gives us a better idea of what the network value of the asset is. And in this case, it gives us a better idea. It's a proxy. They call it a proxy of value. It points to, it's not a pure indicator, but it points to the value or the store to save value of the asset on the network because it takes in factors such as the aggregate cost basis for the network. So when you factor in both of these in an equation, in an algorithm, and you map it out on a graph compared to the price, you can determine pretty quickly whether it's overvalued or undervalued whether we're near a market top or we're getting close to a market bottom. So we're not even close to a market top. We're not even close. Look at 2017. Look at what happened in 2013. Wow. Look at back in 2011. So we're not even close. So we're here at 60,000, let's just say. The question becomes when we hit this mark here, we enter the red zone or the pink red zone what will the price likely be? Now, we'll go into that price prediction in a bit, but I want you to get an idea. Now, the other one I'm looking at is just the Ethereum active addresses, which is the unique active addresses that were active on the Ethereum network between sender and receivers where those transactions were successful. So <clears throat> it's interesting because the Ethereum network hit an all-time high in May in terms of active addresses and has actually gone down a bit now, Bit now Ethereum is supposed to be taking over Bitcoin, taking over the planet. It's supposed to be the best trade of a lifetime. This is very telling to me. Something's going on with Ethereum. When we look at the um, MVRVZ score, we see that Ethereum is nowhere near an all-time high. We're, no, we're nowhere near an all-time high in terms of market valuation. So that's another good sign that if... Um, Let's just say that we're talking right now that the price of Ethereum is, let's say, $4,800. At this point, what will the price be when it reaches this point in the future? So that's another thing we'll keep in mind. Now, what's interesting, looking further, we'll look at the Litecoin. The number of active addresses in Litecoin is spiking up. And the network activity is picking up on Litecoin. And Litecoin, as you know, is an overlooked asset. Everyone's talking about Solana. Everyone's talking about, um, you know, uh, Shibu Inu. People, you know, I had one guy leave the group. He says, you're not talking enough about Shibu Inu. You're not talking enough about my favorite altcoin. What they don't realize, folks, is these people who are leaving the group because I don't talk enough about the altcoins is those altcoins are shit coins. They do not meet my criteria. My criteria is to ensure using the astrology and combining it with all the different uh, on-chain, off-chain, uh, fundamental combined with technical analysis sources, along with my intuition and experience and a bit of my IT background, all together is to assess which coins, which projects, when I say coin, I really mean a project, which, which, which crypto projects have the best chance of not only surviving, but thriving in the coming storm that's already started. I don't care where you live, what your politics are. This storm has started and it's coming to a living room near you, particularly when we talk about inflation, which we'll get to in a bit. Watch the full presentation of this webinar in the Crypto Astrology Group membership at gta.williamstickevers.com or click the link in the description.